Now, there was this McAllendon study. Is that what you were quoting before, or is there new data? So there are, there are several studies related to, to this product, and, and, and Andrew's probably better than us, but um, I think um, this study refers to maintenance of uh, articular cartilage um, in patients who receive this drug. Um, I, I think we'd all be a little skeptical about this, but th that's what they found. You know, I think that the, the, the McAllendon study, he's a fantastic researcher. Um, the study that we're talking about is repeated every three months injection of standard triamcinolone acetonide. It is not related um, and not uh, a part of the extended release. This mm -hmm. is standard crystalline um, uh, uh, kenalog, basically. Um, and this showed a decrease in, in cartilage volume and, 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 and slight worsening of the osteoarthritis. And this was a study that was done where these repeated doses were given, at least as far as I can tell from the study having read it a number of times, were the repeated doses were given without necessarily reassessing symptoms at those different points in time. And the assessment of the efficacy relative to saline was done only at three month intervals when you would expect already for the uh, 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 standard immediate release steroid to have waned in terms of its mm -hmm. clinical effect. So there were some problems with the study, but nevertheless, it raises a little bit of a red flag about what repeated exposure at very high levels of steroid with these pulses every three months might do over the long haul. And that was the, the, the pulsed, regular, non, not non with encapsulated the, Not with steroid. the long acting drug with the regular. I, I think the other thing is, is that there, 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 while there was synovitis and some evidence of osteoarthritis, these were not the patients that we typically see in our practices who are pretty much far along the spectrum of the cartilage being already quite right. diseased. Uh, another interpretation of the same data could be, well, these people got more active because they were less symptomatic, uh, therefore leading to more de degradative issues with the cartilage. Peter, just to be complete, can we also just uh, discuss among ourselves these uh, clinics that are spouting up uh, injecting growth factors into knees and platelet-rich plasma and who knows oh, what? Uh, be my guest. I'm backing off on this. So. Uh, you know, I think both our academy and the scientific literature I've looked at has not shown uh, very good results with this or that it's of value. What do you think, Rich? So there have been some um, less than stellar studies that have shown minor improvements in people. Um, there's a huge placebo effect with these injections. If you pay $5,000 for an injection, you're likely to say it works. Yeah, worked. it's very, very expensive. I was surprised. But I want to win the so... home run derby. I need these things. <laughs> and they're not usually covered well, by insurance. What I tell patients yeah. who come in and ask about this is that I'd say that there's one person who definitely has an improvement in their overall quality of life as a result of the injection, and that's the injector who's getting the $10,000. <laughs> but the, 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 the bottom line is, is that I think there is a reasonable attempt to explore new avenues with mesenchymal stem cells with platelet-rich plasma, but as a recent uh, article suggests in our literature that JBGS reviews, is that there's such heterogeneity of these studies that okay. things have not been standardized. It's really not yet ready for prime time. 